Alright guys, welcome back to another episode of No Man's Sky. So I ended up uh, coming on here to refine some materials and um, while I was waiting I ended up expanding the base just a little bit. So I got this little back room up here and I connected it up with the landing pad. So I had to remove the landing pad and put it a little bit higher because we have that foundation part here. But um, we can put extra storage along here eventually. And I was thinking about putting stairs going up to a second level here. Uh, that will open up um, a little bit more room. But I ended up uh, placing down the farming plots to do that. What I ended up doing was just grabbing these ones. We unlocked them, I think, last episode. So um, basically I just put them there. Though I haven't hooked them up yet. Uh, I did upgrade the power. We have two batteries now. And I think I added a few additional solar panels as well. Yeah, I added two more. So that should give us enough power, I think. Um, okay, it's just going online right now. So we're looking at... It says darkness hours remaining one, one minute and five seconds. Uh, let's just take a look at what our battery power is. So depleted in... Oh, time until charged. Okay, so we won't really know too much until it goes offline, but... Assuming that... Because it's not f giving out the full power, they can give out generally 50 power per thing, but that will take like 30 more seconds before that kicks in, I think. So we'll keep an eye on that, and we'll see how much, um, how much we're actually going to get. Because right now we're getting about 25, but I, I don't know how long the daylight will last in this particular area. We'll have to keep an eye on it. It'll tell us in just a second. Alright, so we have 14, roughly 15 hour or 15 minutes of daylight. And our charging time, 9 minutes. So. Uh, let's see here. We're only producing 25 per solar panel at the moment, so it's not exactly kicked in yet for the full uh, power consumption or power generation. Thank you. 
Brady then. So I ended up planting a couple um, different types of crops. Uh, well, plants, I guess. I don't, I don't really... Uh, it's kind of crops, but it's not. So these are the nip-nip bulbs. These are what they look like when they're planted. They do um, get pretty big uh, when they're fully ready for harvest and stuff. I planted... Um, what else did I plant? I planted star bulbs, which are those ones there, and then the uh, frostwort, which are these two. Those can produce glass, which we can use for a base, so that's why I'm using those ones. That one's mostly economy, but we can turn it into um, carbon as well, so uh, we can refine that into carbon. Those you can't really do, they're just strictly economy-based uh, things. Uh, we do also have some other crops that we could definitely try growing. Um, we have that uh, solarium. I think it's solarium. Uh, solarium. I don't know. Uh, it's basically like a uh, hot planet, but we don't have the resources to plant that. I'm going to have to see if we can't find... Um, the mineral that I need to plant that. We need... Um, what is it? Flo phosphorus for um, planting that. We need it 25 per, per plant. So uh, that would also give us carbon. It takes longer to actually produce, but um, like this only takes four hours. That takes like 16 hours. So we might go with star bulbs, another star bulb maybe. I don't know. We'll see what we can come up with uh, for that. But uh, oh, another thing that I ended up doing was I ended up um, getting some, uh, what do you call it, some basically equivalent to feces from the creatures so we could plant the nip-nip bulbs. But while I was there, I ended up taming up a creature. It's one of those cat creatures. So that's basically what I got. Um, he's really happy and hypergenic and everything like that. Though, I think what we could do is probably uh, work on his genetics a little bit and maybe tweak him a little bit so he'll uh, be more helpful and stuff. Right now he's, um, if we look at his stats, I think it's this menu here. Uh, he's very playful, 32%, which is, um, we'll have to work on that. Uh, gentleness is 70%, which means he's great for... Um, helping around and stuff like that and intelligent is 11 percent so we might be able to adjust the intelligent a little bit more Great, so I ended up um, getting installing a couple things onto our Exocraft. Some um, components that we need still are wiring looms. Uh, we need three wiring looms. I got the um, radiation, I think it's radiation? No, that's radiation. That's um, what toxic environments. So basically like um, poisonous air and stuff like that. That one's installed. That allows us to be in our vehicle without needing 
to um, like it will recharge our systems if we're in the vehicle. So it acts like a ship basically, but it's mobile on the ground. It does require fuel though. Uh, the downside to that is um, it does require fuel, but it does allow us to get a little bit further a little faster, so there, it kind of pays off a little bit. Um, but I still need components for dioxide and the hermetic seal and the wiring loom, and obviously the wiring looms for all three, but we also need more... Um, phosphorus and uranium so we're gonna need that for the cold one unfortunately so we can basically drive around on the planet uh, we might be able to pick some of that up at the space station I think there's phosphorus sometimes up there I don't know about the uranium but phosphorus there should be um, I already installed the ionized cobalt we had a little bit of cobalt on our base so I just basically um, Refined that with oxygen and that created the ionized cobalt and then I re uh, Did the ionized cobalt with the oxygen rather than just the regular carbon and that gave me even more so we ha we're all stocked up on um, Ionized cobalt now which we can turn back into cobalt if we need to but um, Other things are a little bit hard to come by uh, one of the things that I need is the um, I don't even know how to pronounce that. Deuterium. Uh, it's basically when you combine the dihydrogen and trillium together. So we don't have enough dihydrogen. So I'm going to have to go out and try to locate some crystals and then we'll mine those up. But um, try not to anger any sentinels either while we're doing that. But get in here and we'll have to mine uh, some carbon I think uh, because we're going to need some fuel for this thing as well but let's see if we can't find some of these crystals sure there will be So I've been at the station for quite a while. I've gone to actually other stations and I still am ending up with the same issue. No one is selling me uranium for some reason. So we got 
the uh, phosphorus, we got dioxide, we got the ammonia, we got the pyre or pyrate, we got uh, periphium, but the only thing that I can't seem to find is the uranium. So we'll have to go mine that next episode for sure. I mean, unless this guy somehow has it on him, but I'm pretty sure he won't. Yeah, he, he doesn't have any uranium. And, yeah, I mean, there is a planet in our system that we can go and mine that from. There is uh, this one right here. It's got silver and uranium, so we can definitely do that next episode. But, you know, we'll take one step at a time. I got a whole bunch of uh, other resources just so we are stocked up so we don't need to worry about it. But, um... I also bought, um, what was it, the dihydrogen jelly, which we can turn into dihydrogen to stock up on that as well. But outside of that, if you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.